How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is a Venlab clamp multimeter. I want to thank Venlabs for sending this product to me for review. Why would you use such a thing in comparison to a traditional multimeter like this one? These guys are really low cost in comparison to the industry standard of fluke multimeters. When I was working, I always use flukes because you really, really want high accuracy. And usually at companies, every single year, they do a calibration. They make sure that the absolute reading on these things is what you're actually seeing on the meter because this is gonna affect how you design things. These meters, the accuracy is eh, not as good, right? Most of the time when you're at home, you don't need very high accuracy. You are usually fixing a one-off item, and if it's off by 1%, it really doesn't matter. For example, let's say I'm reading the amperage out of some solar panels, and it gives me a good idea of how much electricity I'm generating, but so what if it's off by 10%? Another reason to use a clamp-style meter is many times you don't want to pass real current through the device itself. You need really, really thick wire. So when you have a clamp-style meter, the current goes through this hole, and it's actually this conductive circle that conducts some current that goes through. Whenever you have some kind of current going through here, it doesn't matter how distributed it is or how concentrated it is. That's why you can put any kind of thin wire or really, really thick wire that contains the same amount of current and this is going to read the same thing. In a meter like this that doesn't have a clamp, you're gonna have to change one of these plugs to let's say the 40 milliamp one or the 10 milliamp option. And there's a fuse inside. And if you ever go past this current, it's gonna pop the fuse. You're gonna have to open this up and here are the fuses themselves and they're not cheap to replace. Many times people check the accuracy of a cheaper version by using a more expensive one, but they don't know how accurate their more expensive one is. Most likely they're home hobbyists or whatnot, and they don't have it calibrated. I personally don't calibrate this thing every single year, so I actually don't know how accurate it is as well. So what you end up comparing is what this one reads and what this one reads, and you can just go, okay, the difference is that but you don't know how accurate this one is, nor do you know how accurate this one is. The only way to do it is, for example, for a resistor. You can buy a very, very high accuracy resistor, but it's quite expensive, like $10, $20, that is up to a 0.1% accuracy. Then you put the leads on and measure this resistor. By the way, if you measure it with some leads, there's resistance in the leads itself as well. So you gotta remove the leads, somehow connect it straight across these terminals. Let's say we are reading a 0.1%, 100 ohm thing, and then this thing reads 101 ohms or something, but really you know it's 100 ohms exactly with an accuracy of 0.1%, which means it can be 100.1 ohms, or 99.9 .9 ohms. And then you'll know how off it is. Possibly you can go inside this device. I saw there's three potentiometers here and I don't know which one goes with what. So you can go in there and twist those knobs until this meter reads exactly 100 ohms. Then you'll know it's calibrated properly at 100 ohms, by the way. So sometimes there's also a linearity question here. If you calibrate this thing to 100 ohms, and all of a sudden, let's say you wanted to measure 10 kilo ohms, 10,000 ohms, right? It might still not read 10,000 ohms even though it reads 100 ohms exactly. Even though at 100 ohms, it's perfect. But when you go to read 10,000 ohms, it might read 10,020 ohms. It's gonna be a little bit off. So this is a non-linear function. Anyway, let me stop talking about this and show you just at least a few functions of this thing. It's on this non-contact voltage and it appears to sense the non-contact voltage in this little tip here. See? Ooh, ooh. It's making that sound. If I kind of go around here, it doesn't sense it. Looks like if you are about one centimeter or closer, it starts beeping. But then if you try to sense the wires within the walls, it doesn't do it. It's a little bit too far away. The criteria for this non-contact voltage is if the electric field exceeds 20 volts detected by the inductive sensor installed by the jaws. So the sensor is right here. They really should mark it a little bit better and say that it's right here. It seems like if I touch it, it beeps. 
like maybe I disturb it enough, it's saying there's a voltage, but obviously I don't have 20 volts on me. Very simple packaging. It does come with a little case, instruction manual, the test leads, and they are covered so you don't poke yourself, but I feel like I can easily lose these little knobby things at the end. At least in my experience, this is not so sharp. Sometimes you can get aftermarket leads that are much sharper than this. It's almost like a needle. This does feel sharp, but I don't think this is absolutely necessary to cover them all the time. I do really like how it comes with a temperature probe. It's just a wire up to here and it connects two dissimilar kinds of metal. When heated, there's a voltage difference, like a little hand strap. Now let's check out the temperature probe here. Plug this in, turn it to the temperature function. It's C, I'll change it to F. Right now the ambient temperature is 63 degrees. My thermostat says it's around 64, so this seems fairly accurate. It's like right on. And if I touch it, well, it increases. I have a fire set up right now because it's kind of cold. It's reading 81, but let me go ahead and touch this metal here. Oh yeah, 100, 200 degrees. We want to measure the amperage that our lights are using, but in order to use that, we actually have to split this wire. And if you don't want to do something like that, you can get a measurement device like this, which allows you to split the wire already and you just kind of clip it through one of these holes. It's meant for up to 125 volt AC, 15 amps of current. And if you go through this hole, it's 1x reading. If you go through this hole, it's 10x reading. So I think they kind of like loop through here 10 times. I'm going to unplug one of the lights here. This is one of my video lights and it has four CFLs. I think it's around 40 watts or so. AC amps. This wiggly line is AC. So then we just kind of clamp it through here. Half an amp. I have a kilowatt here, but it has three prongs. So you can use one of these de-grounder things, but you're really supposed to connect this ground to a real ground. But since this thing is ungrounded, it doesn't really matter. I just need it to connect this kilowatt thing here. 0 0.48, 0 0.47. And if I do 10X, 4.85. So 10X is good because it increases the current so that if your meter is not sensitive enough, then it can essentially boost the amperage and you can um, kind of read it off the meter and then divide by 10 so you can get another digit. So this will be 0.486 amps. And if you want to find out the voltage, you stick the leads in the AC hole. I know this looks really scary to stick things into the AC plug, but if you know that the leads are high impedance, it's not set to like current rating where it's gonna blow anything up. So basically you gotta know what you're doing. And if you plug it in, it's only gonna sense it. It's not gonna pass much current through and we can measure 124 volts. Solar panel here, it's reading about 34 watts. I've stuck the leads here. We measure about 20 volts, but when you plug it in, it's gonna put a load on there. So the voltage is actually gonna be a little bit lower than what you see here. The cool thing about the solar is it has two leads over there that I can clamp one of them on. So let me set it to DC amps. The curious thing is that it says it's negative 2.2 amps, but whatever, right? If I connect one of them, it's hmm, even more negative, huh? Zero setting offset here. So I can put zero and do relative reading instead. Now we know it's 1.81. Measure it the other way. It's plus 1.81. Okay, this works. But, you know, the, the absolute setting is not very good. You gotta use the relative ground wire 1.77 and the other way is 1.83. You can't put both of them like that because one current goes one way, the other current goes the other way and it cancels out. Somehow do this, kind of goes in one way and then goes back the other way, right? So you get double current here, 3.71. It also comes with two AA batteries, even though the instruction says it uses AAA batteries. So that's important to know. I like AA batteries much more because they last much longer and they seem about the same price as AAA batteries. That was fun. Sometimes when you don't have a clamp meter, you, you need a clamp meter and maybe you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on one and this will do the job. It just kind of gives you a rough reading. If you look at the accuracy over here for DC amps is plus minus 3%, plus five 
digits of the smallest digits that's reading. This is a great hobbyist type thing where you just kind of need approximate numbers. You don't need it to like be 0.1% accurate or even 1% accurate. Good enough is the name of the game here. If you guys are interested in getting one of these low cost one, it's really low cost compared to you know, hundreds of dollars of a fluke meter, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. If you get it through there, it's not gonna be more expensive or anything, but it will help out this channel. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.